Hello everybody and welcome to SysGuide's YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to install Fedora 38 with snapshot and rollback support. With snapshot and rollback support enabled, if you make a mistake, you can easily undo the changes you made to the system and restore it to its original state. Even if you completely break the operating system, causing it to fail to boot, uh, you can still restore it to a working state by rolling back to any working snapshot. So in this video, I'll walk you through the following steps. First, I will install Fedora Workstation 38 using the Anaconda installer with the root file system mounted as the main volume and the home directory mounted as a subvolume. I will not create a separate partition for the boot directory. Instead, it will be part of the system root. Once the installation is complete, I'll create subvolumes for other directories. Uh, these directories contain temporary files and caches. Others contain data that you do not want to lose if you roll back the system root. And some should be in read-write node when booting into a read-only snapshot. Uh, next, I'll install and configure Snapper so that you can easily create and delete snapshots, as well as undo any changes made between two snapshots. I will also install and configure Grub BTRFS so that you can boot to any snapshot from the Grub menu. Roll back that snapshot and make it the default system root. And finally, I'll create a subvolume snapshot of the system root and set it as the default. I also have a text version of this video where I explain the steps in greater detail. Uh, please also take a look at the web page. Um, I've included a link to the web page in the description. So let's get started. Boot your system using Fedora 38 Workstation Installer in UEFI mode. In the Installer Boot screen, select the Fedora 38 Live environment. On the Welcome screen, select Install Fedora. The first step is to set system language. I'll set it to India English. You must set it to your preferred language. After that, configure your keyboard layout and region. Uh, I'll quickly set them up. Next, select the installation destination. Ensure that the, the disk on which you want to install Fedora is selected, and then select the advanced option. Click the plus sign to create an EFI partition. Set the partition size to 512 megabyte. The file system to EFI system partition. I'll set the label to EFI. Uh, you can set whatever you want and then set the, the mount point to slash boot EFI. Click on the plus sign again to create a BTRFs volume. Uh, I will use all the remaining space. Set the file system to BTRFS. And the mount point to slash. Uh, click OK to finish. Next, you must create a home sub volume. Uh, select the BTRFS volume from the left panel and click on the plus sign on the right panel. Enter the name as home and mount point as slash home. Uh, click OK to create, and I will create the remaining subvolumes when the installation is finished. For now, click Done. Check everything is properly defined, uh, and click the Accept Changes button. Press the Begin Installation button to start the installation process. Um, it will take some time to finish the installation, so sit back and relax. Installation is now finished. Restart your computer. Uh, 
the last phase of the installation process will start. Uh, click the Start Setup button to complete the remaining customization steps, such as setting a new login, password, and so on. Um, I'll quickly configure everything. All right, you have now logged into Fedora Workstation 38 with the all new GNOME 44 desktop interface. Um, while your system was booting, you may have noticed a load EMB sparse file not allowed error message. Uh, this is because you did not create a separate ext4 boot partition and instead included it in the btrfs system root. Grub preboot writes to slash boot slash grub to grub env file if the boot was successful. And this error occurs because of the grub btrfs.mod driver, unlike ext4, is read only. Uh, to resolve this issue, simply disable the grub menu auto hide feature. So launch the GNOME terminal. Uh, I'll quickly increase the font size to make it more readable. Check the grub environment to see if the menu auto hide feature is active. Uh, as you can see, the grub menu auto hide feature is already active. So you need to disable this feature. Type the command sudo grub2 edit env unset menu auto hide. Check once more to ensure that the grub menu auto hide feature is indeed disabled. Uh, list your block device. Uh, this is how it should look. Examine the sub volumes as well. Uh, as you can see, a home sub volume has been created. The var slash lib slash machines sub volume is created automatically by systemd in Fedora Workstation uh, for systemd and spawn containers. Next, enable the fast mirrors so you can speed up package downloads. Open the slash etc slash dnf slash dnf dot conf file. Set default yes equals true. Uh, fastest mirror equals true. And max parallel downloads to 10. Save the config file and exit. Clear all previous caches and update the local DNF metadata cache. Uh, install Vim, I notify tools, and make packages. Uh, you need them later when you install grub btrfs. Now update your operating system. The update is finished. Now reboot your system. Um, in the next section, I'll show you how to create additional sub volumes to keep certain directories out of root file system snapshots. In this section, I'm going to create additional subvolumes on the system root. 
these subvolumes are created on the system root to avoid being included in the rollback regime because some of these directories contain temporary files and caches. Uh, others contain data that you do not want to lose if you roll back the system root. And some should be in read-write mode when booting into a read-only snapshot. Uh, so before that, let me change the system's host name. Um, I'll set the host name to Fedora, but you can call it whatever you want. get the, the UUID of the system root file system before proceeding with the creation of subvolumes. Um, you'll need it to add subvolumes to the FS tab file. I will set to be variable root UUID with the UUID of the system root. I will also copy the BTRFS options from the FS tab and set it to variable options. I'll now go to the browser and open the web page for the guide I wrote on this subject. Please visit uh, the page for more information. I also included a link to the web page in the description. Uh, copy everything from subvolumes to closing parentheses, paste it in your terminal, and hit enter key. Um, verify that the variable contains all of the subvolumes you want to create. Uh, return to the web page and copy the script to create subvolumes from for to done. paste it into your terminal, and press Enter. All of the subvolumes are now created. Um, before mounting the subvolumes, you must reset the permissions on some of the directories. Set the permission to 1777 on slash var slash tmp. and set the permission to 1770 on var live gdm. When you create a subvolume for a Firefox browser, its profile directory will be set as root. Uh, change it back to your username. When using QCOW2 images as virtual disks in KVM virtualization, the input-output performance suffers heavily. Um, so disable the, the copy on write feature on the images directory. As you can see, the copy on write is disabled on the images directory. Open the FS tab file and double check that all subvolumes are properly added. And this is how it should look. Uh, the UUID will be unique to your system. Save the file and exit. Now reload BFS tab and mount all the newly created subvolumes. Now list the block devices 
it should look something like this. Uh, also, check your subvolumes, and it should look something like this. You can delete the old directories now that everything appears to be in order. Copy the command from for to done. Paste it into your terminal and hit enter. Uh, all subvolumes have now been created, and in the next section, I will install Snapper Package, uh, a tool to easily create snapshots and show you how to configure it so that you can start creating snapshots very easily. In this section, I will show you how to install and configure Snapper. Uh, Snapper is a command line program for file system snapshot management. With Snapper, you can create, delete, and compare snapshots and undo changes done between snapshots. Um, so install Snapper and Python 3 DNF uh, plugin Snapper packages. Uh, the Python 3 DNF plugin snapper package uh, allows you to create pre and post snapshots every time you install a package on the system with the DNF package manager. After installing snapper, you must create a snapper configuration file for the subvolume for which you intend to create snapshots. First, I'll create a configuration called root for the system root at slash. Um, next, I'll create a configuration called home for the home directory at slash home. Verify that the snapper configuration files have been created. Following that, you must configure access control lists, uh, ACL on snapshot directories. Uh, this allows the regular user to run the snapper command uh, without needing to use the root privilege sudo command. The ACL will be configured for uh, the directories slash dot snapshots and slash home slash dot snapshots. I'll configure the ACL for both the uh, root and home configurations. Open the FSTab file and add the newly created snapshot subvolumes. mount the newly created snapshots subvolumes. As you can see, the snapshots subvolumes have been successfully mounted. List your block devices. Your setup should look something like this. And as you can see, a top-level snapshots subvolume with ID5 has been created for system root. And a snapshot subvolume with ID256 has also been created for home directory. Disable the indexing of the snapshots directories by update db utility. It is enabled by default. 
and can cause significant slowdown and excessive memory usage um, if you have a large number of snapshots. Enable snapshot booting by appending the SUSAD BTRFS snapshot booting. Equals true option to the grub config file. Now, as snapshot booting is enabled, you must also make changes to the grub.cfg file in the uh, EFI file system. And set the BTRFS relative path to yes. And finally, update the grub.cfg configuration file. Uh, list the snapshots for the system root volume. Also, uh, list the snapshots for the home subvolume. At this stage, you do not have any snapshots. Um, we will create some later. And for now, the snapper configuration is complete. Uh, in the next section, I will show you how to install Grub VTRFS package so that you can boot to snapshot uh, from the Grub menu. Consider this scenario. You are trying something and make a mistake. You mess up, up the operating system, uh, causing it to fail to boot properly the next time. Uh, what are you going to do? You may wish you could revert to a previously working snapshot and reboot again. Uh, and this is where snapshot booting from the Grub menu comes in handy. By installing Grub BTRFS, you add Fedora Linux snapshots to the Grub menu allowing you to test a snapshot in read-only mode before rolling back to it in read-write mode. So to install a uh, first clone grub BTRFS repository uh, from GitHub to your system, change to grub BTRFS directory. Grub BTRFS comes pre-configured to work with Arch and Gen 2 Linux. Um, but to make it work with Fedora, you must make a few changes to the Grub uh, BTRFS configuration file. Set the kernel parameter systemd volatile equals state. It makes the system boot with the uh, root file system as read only, and the var will be mounted as a writable temp FS RAM disk. Uh, basically, the system will behave like a live Linux media uh, without persistence. Uncheck the comment to set the location of the grub config file to grub2 directory. Unlike other distributions, Fedora keeps grub.cfg file in the slash boot slash grub2 directory. Um, and then change the path for the grub2 make config command to slash fbin slash grub2 mk config. and uncheck the comment to set the binary, which checks the grub config file for, uh, for syntax errors to grub2. 
uh, the default will be just grub for other distributions. Finally, save and exit config file. Um, now install grub btrfs to your system. Uh, so regenerate grub config files so that the changes you just made are added to grub.cfg file. You'll see a no, no snapshots found warning, uh, which is fine because you haven't created any snapshots yet. Finally, enable grub btrfsd service. The grub btrfsd is a daemon that watches the snapshot directory for you and updates the grub menu automatically every time a snapshot is created or deleted. Uh, your grub btrfs installation is now complete. Um, you can now delete the cloned grub btrfs directory. In the next section, I will show you how to create a snapshot of the system root and set it as default so that the rollback of snapshots will become easy and error free. Now that everything in Fedora has been installed and configured, um, it is time to take a snapshot of the system root and make that snapshot the new default system root. Um, this significantly simplifies the management of snapshots and rollbacks. First, create a directory named one in the slash dot snapshots directory. Uh, next, create an XNL file called info. XNL in the slash dot snapshots slash one directory. Go to the guides webpage, copy uh, the script from sudo to EOF, paste it into your terminal, and press the enter button. Now create a read write subvolume called snapshot of the system root in the slash dot snapshots slash one directory. List the BTRFS subvolumes and get the ID of the newly created subvolume snapshot. Using the subvol ID, in this case 271, set the snapshot subvolume in the one directory uh, as the default subvolume for the system root. Now reboot your system so that you can boot into the snapshot subvolume, which you set it as default for system root. After the reboot, confirm that the snapshot subvolume in the one directory uh, is indeed the default subvolume for the system root. Now check the snapshots in Snapper. Uh, as you can see, snapshot subvolume uh, in the one directory is also visible as snapshot number one in Snapper. Uh, the asterisk uh, indicates that this snapshot is the default and is currently active. Um, the installation of Fedora Workstation 38 with Snapper and Grub BTRFS support, which allows you to easily take and manage subvolume snapshots, uh, is now complete. I ran some tests to ensure that everything works properly and that there are no issues. Uh, please visit the web page where I have detailed these tests so that you are confident you will not have to waste your valuable time reinstalling Fedora. Uh, I've included a link to the web page in the description. You can now begin experimenting with your system without fear of destroying it and having to reinstall Fedora. 
Uh, also, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you are notified whenever I upload an interesting video on the subject of Linux. Thank you for watching the video. Take care and bye-bye.